advising Kogi people. Yusuf Ocholi Okpanachi, popularly known as Don Pablo, is a Nigerian business tycoon and renowned philanthropist. He is most popular among his people for his selfless acts of service and genuine interest to the development of his society. Unlike many of his contemporaries who found their ways to the top through opportunities created by others, Ocholi created his own path through sheer hard work diligence and sincerity. Uh, growing up as a child, it was uh, pretty difficult. Having come from a poor background, my father was a civil servant and a farmer. We live in a remote area in Ugolao. And my mom was a petty trader. Ocholi, the first born of a family of four children, was born on the 14th of August 1988. His father, who was a local government staff, combined farming with his public service job to augment his meager salaries. His mother, who was a full time housewife, complimented her husband with her petty trading in agricultural produce. Ocholi had his nursery and primary school education at Success Academy Nursery and Primary School in Ida. He was still in primary school when his father died in 2001 and two years after he completed his primary school education, his mother died in 2006. <laughs> After my dad passed out, I have to come to Lokoja here. I was moved to Lokoja by my uncle. And um, I was here, and then my mom passed on again. Saw the need for me to leave Kogi State and search for in search for being a pastor because I have a lot of responsibility now that my mom and my dad are no more and I have uh, siblings to take care of. Ocholi shared his first night experience while in Lagos. For me, uh, I've watched on TV, I hear about Jigula and also I decided to go to that direction. It was pretty difficult to mingle with people and all of that. So I got to Lagos, I think on my first night I <coughs> I slept in a mosque and then I, the next morning I was able to talk to some persons and uh, they told me that okay, there is this man, it's only in Gala Lagos that they can introduce me to, where he can buy a bike for me to be riding and deliver money to him and all of that. So they directed me to his place, I went there. My dad, the Onu Igala, the late Onu Igala of Lagos State was still alive. And then Don Pablo came to the house and for the kind of person my dad is, he accommodates all Kogites from far and near. And Pablo came looking for where to stay, looking for accommodation, looking for a job in Lagos and nowhere to go to. So Don Pablo came to the house and met my younger brother who was outside and they welcomed him and he was brought forward to the, Onu, the late Onu Igala. So when he came, I took him as my son. Because as you can see, anybody that come through any of my child is also my child. So we were living together, he was with me. Going out with Alaji, my husband, they were doing all the, they were all working with him. We stayed in that house the first, went to this morning. So we ate together. He was a very good boy when he was with us. And then upon explaining my situation to the man, he gave me uh, a place to stay in his house. And, uh, and this place is, you know, this man has many wife and many children, so his house is always filled up. So he told me, anywhere you can stay here, make yourself feel at home. Then I had, I think I had like 40,000 naira with me as I then. So I saw that the house have two staircases. One they don't use, the other one they use. So 
I just bought that student foam and put on the staircase and run wire to that place. So I made that place comfortable for myself to live in and all of that. I got to meet him in Lagos, here in Ajegunle. Um, we were neighbors in our former compound. Um, we became friends because the first day he came, I saw him moving. I assisted him with um, bringing up his load upstairs. So that's how we started talking. After a while, I realized he was a very gentle young man. He was calm. We became friends. His formative years in Ajegunle were really tough, but it was the road map to his success in life. It was difficult to eat where you have to, you have to wait for people to eat and go to bed. So the remnants that they left in their kitchen, you can gather them and eat and all of that. And then upon that, I met this uh, Hausa man that was being helpful. He used to give me 15 naira every morning before he goes to his business and all of that. So I used that to buy sometimes beans and bread, sometimes I just buy uh, tea and bread. Anytime when I see him, I ask him, when I don't chop, if he say no, I give him money. If he say, even if he say yes, I'm going to give him money, anytime. When I get food, I have to divide the two. I will chop half, I will give, keep Yusuf half. Because of uh, the, the kind of feeling I have for Yusuf, I don't know why. I just have him. Nobody say, you know that say, nobody say he get money that time. So, but I just like him. I just, the. Sometimes I will carry, give him many, many things to say. Even one day I, I give him a laptop because I just like him. Thirsty for more education, Ocholi enrolled himself into Alakolo Senior High School, Tolu Complex in Ajegule area. In a bid to pay his school fees, he did some minor jobs. On his uh, trying period, he went to so many companies to go and, learn, to go and work as a laborer. Like AG Leventis, he went there. He went to one shipping company as well to go and just do some certain things to make the ends move. He was a public toilet receptionist before he moved to car washing business and finally to Coca Cola Bottling Company as supervisor overseeing offloading and loading bottles of soft drinks at the depot. I was in Coca Cola, I was earning 250 naira per day until I met this lady in Coca Cola. She was the manager then in another company. And she took me there and uh, I was earning 400 naira per day and all of that. So I was working there and while I was waiting for my, I did not enter Coca Cola with my result, my O level result. He later left Coca-Cola Bottling Company for Leventis, where he was employed as a cleaner. He worked with Leventis for a very long time before he resigned his appointment and enrolled himself in a computer training program. He learned a lot from there. When he was learning, it enticed me because within a short period, he has known a lot of things. His brain was very sharp, so I was happy. When I saw him, the way he was growing during all that time, I know at the end of the day he's going to make it. The computer lesson was for six months. After his training, he took up appointments as a cyber cafe manager before he left for Institut Superior de Formation Professionnelle, a university in Bene Republic, Cotonou, for further studies. For our graduation, it helps me to understand that if you don't have the O level result, you cannot graduate. That's at, at uh, 200 level, they told me that. Because I returned back to Kobe State sometime in 2010. I was in Kobe State, I enrolled for another GC in Ida again. The exam was cancelled and all of that. Not until uh, I have to write again in Alakoto High School. So I put in for NECO. And as God may have it, everything was fine. I was able to graduate and all of that. While studying, Ocholi worked. He was working as a commission agent. However, 
Before he completed his studies, having made contacts, he was able to get some executive contracts based on his integrity and relationship with some prominent people he met within the country and outside the shore of the country. I realized he was chasing some oil contracts then, chasing construction contracts then. So every morning when he um, wakes up and is about to drive out, about to go out, he comes, oh, I don't need to go to deal. You know, we wish him well, pray for him, no worry, he go, he go sit, you know. That's how the whole construction thing started. Then um, there was a time he came to me and like, oh, there was this project he was chasing. They finally gave it to him in a papa. We were happy. I went there with him for the first time. And um, he constructed um, an hotel for someone in a papa, close to Ajegunle here. That was, I think that was his first major project, I think. Aside selling um, diesel and, and tankers and containers. So that was how the rise started for me. He got a breakthrough in his business and was established. On his return to the country, he established his own company and gave it the name Waves of Mines Resources Limited. As his fortune soars in leaps and bounds, Ocholi sought a way to contribute to human and community developments as he established Wave of Success Foundation. With the foundation, he reaches out to the less privileged, gives out scholarship to deserving candidates, registers those who want to acquire knowledge in trading, carries out medical outreach and caters for the aged, widows as well as orphans. Before the COVID-19, you do go out and share things to people, just exactly the way my husband is doing when he was alive. Pablo has been a backbone. Pablo has been a very a supportive brother. Pablo, no, there is no day you call Pablo and Pablo will not pick up his phone to attend to you. And to, to be very honest, Pablo is very respectful. He has been uh, a support system to this family, like the Akko family for like decades, like he's always with us, he's always providing our needs, like taking care of our family. In his usual magnanimity, Ocholi Yusuf Opanachi built a two-bedroom flat for old couple who he met in Lokoja, the Kogi state capital. They, I get land, I say yes. I should carry them go for where the land. I brought them here. They see him, so, and from there I walk start. Today, Mr. and Mrs. Gabriel are thankful for the magnanimous gesture of Ocholi. I feel well, well. It's a good house. May God will save him, save his family, both out and inside. Both we are there, God will save him. God will give him long life and prosperity. Recently, during the outbreak of the coronavirus pandemic and total lockdown in the country, Ocholi sought a way to make life easy for the people of Igala Nation by providing some relief materials like food items and preventive kits to them. He also donated some cash and other items to the state government in fighting the scorch. Ocholi has also empowered several youths in Kogi State with motorcycles including cash in order to be able to cater for themselves and family. Hi. The bike here is with me. He bought it for me two weeks ago. And aside from this, you have been doing many things for other people. In supporting the fight against crimes and criminality in Kogi State, Ocholi Yusuf Okmanachi, through his foundation, Waves of Success, donated three branded vehicles to the Nigerian Police Force Kogi State Command, Lokoja. This and many more are testaments of his numerous philanthropic gestures. Waves of Success Foundation is the platform where I choose to, just like the Christians would call it, where I choose to pay my tithe through. Because uh, I believe the best way for me to pay my tithe is to reach out to people that are in need. Growing up as a child, the young Ocholi has always wanted to be like Nelson Mandela of South Africa, who he sees then as a role model. It's not about him, how he was there for people, because as an orphan, you will get to understand the need of a parent, of having a parent. 
So you see what this man did. He fought for his people and all of that. These days it's very difficult for you to find such people. So if you notice from the way I do my things, you know that I am for the people because of the way I have studied this person. You understand? I christened him Don Pablo because uh, of the life of um, Pablo Escobar. You know, Pablo Escobar has two lives. He's the Pablo Escobar and Don Pablo. Don Pablo is a philanthropist, someone that likes to carry people along, someone that makes sure nobody's left behind. And knowing Yusuf Ocholi, he has been that friend to me. We went from being neighbors to best of friends within a short period of time. Every Salah celebration, the foundation distribute food items amongst the Muslim community in selected areas in Igala land. The same applies during Christmas celebration. If people had not helped me, I believe I would not have gotten to where I am today. From the story I have told you, you see that I have to go from hand, another hand to another hand to another hand. You understand? If that man has not allowed me to stay in his house, that man has not asked me to come work in the, in the uh, car wash. If the lady I met in Coca-Cola had not uh, helped me to work in Leventis, you know, you know what I mean? So I saw the need to help people because you need to help people to grow. In June 2020, Yusuf Ocholi Okpanachi was on a journey to Ugwelao to flag off the construction of a road and drainages to control gully erosion in the area. Because of the mind they have, the love of his people, and the mind of legal at large, he has done so many, so many projects and he sees that now is the time for him to come back home to the back of this project. We will be completing this job within next week from now. And we are promising people to give people uncomparable standards and we pray that God will help us all. According to Ocholi, the decision to construct the road and fix the drainages was born out of the desire to serve the age-long suffering of the people in the community. I grew up to meet this road like this and today I have the capacity to make good roads for my people and then I saw the sufferings of my people having battle with the road and the erosion and so I decided to bring down my company, put the fund that we need and uh, give them good roads. That is why we are here and that is why I decided to do this for the benefit of the community. My parents never had a home, actually, never had a house, we've always been paying rent and all of that. So, and me having so far where to pass my night is a great motivation for me. My dad died before completing his house. So I find it challenging. And I take it as my responsibility to have a house. They, you hardly see people with the hope of I'm going to build my house, I'm going to have a car, I'm going to have a good life in Nigeria. You know, coupled with the violence and all of that. So those things motivate me to get to where I am today. At that point in our lives, we were two young men who were just coming up, who didn't know their right from their left, even if they know where they were trying, what they were trying to achieve with their lives. He is married to Mrs. Blessing Ocholi Okpanachi. They courted for three years before they got married in 2018. They had their traditional wedding in October and church wedding in December. Back then, back then, while I was in Nigeria, there are so many things I put into consideration. I thought of using flight. I said, okay, if all the big people are using flight, if I start using flight to give me the opportunity to meet, people and all of that. So I think I met my wife the second time I was to body fly. First of all, body fly from Lagos to Abuja, then back to Lagos. 
when I met my wife at the airport, you know. That's how we started talking. Though I was not buoyant, but you know, it's like sacrifice, like investment. You know, that okay, all these big people use flight, so you have to use flight too. Ocholi Yusuf Opanachi, a young man of good heart, with generous intention of genteel education and amiable character, is a symbol of freedom and hope, not only to his immediate family, but to all within his orbit. A very modest and reserved person. I pray whatever he's trying to lay his hand upon, let God answer him speedily. God will enlarge his coast. God will provide for him, God will uplift him, God will provide for his family. Oh, I want Yusuf to, be, to become something. Because when Yusuf be, come to something, I know that many, many people are going to survive. I know him very well. I see him as someone who would lead people. I see him as someone who would care for people, who would um, not let his people um, suffer. I see the good works he's doing in um, Kogi State. I've seen a lot of videos and each time I watch these videos I get very motivated. I see someone who who genuinely cares about people, not because of any agenda. If if everyone would watch this documentary and listen to all these things I've said. And um, it's not just say it's something that happened, you understand? There are one or two persons that can attest to that. If I can come out from a very thick village in Nibolao and to this point I believe everybody should be able to to make out something in life you know dedication and all I went to Lagos without a certificate I left my comfort zone to somewhere where I don't even know people I don't even know anybody I've never been there in my life you know? So these things, with all these things, should serve as motivation to people. You know that you can make, you can make whatever you want if you want it. This is Rising Kogi People.